Hey guys, this is Trina at John's Furniture Repair. Thank you first and foremost for all of your likes and subscriptions and watching the videos and all your wonderful, beautiful comments that I've been reading and enjoying. And uh, I've really been kind of overwhelmed with the support. So thank you everybody. And the other thing is I've got a bunch of questions about products I use. So I thought I would do for my next video a uh, kind of a product run through through all the stuff that I use here in the shop so you guys can have your uh, questions answered and figure out if uh, these products will work for you on your projects. So I'm going to start in the prep area with uh, some stuff I use to remove finishes and do repairs and all that kind of stuff and first and foremost I just want to say that none of these companies are uh, sponsoring me in any way. These are the things that I use because they work and I like them so um, they come from experience so they work for me, they probably work for you. If you can get your hands on them, that is. So I'm gonna run first through stripper. Everybody wants to know what kind of stripper I'm using. So I use Swing Professional uh, brand of strippers. And this one here is their Super Stripper. Um, they have this marked here, but it's actually their Super Stripper, which we use to remove like epoxies and post catalyzed finishes. This is the, the strongest blend that they have. I usually use the uh, 1987 liquid stripper for most of the projects that you guys see on the videos. And that stuff's a little bit runnier. I like the liquid because you can wash down a finish and uh, really clean everything up. And they do have a gel stripper for if you uh, like the thicker, more waxy kind of uh, stuff that stays on uh, vertical surfaces a little better. They have that as well, but I don't really tend to use that one too much. Um, and so that's what you can get in the hardware stores if you don't have access, because you do have to have a professional account for getting these guys. Um, you can get, there's Swing makes a, a residential or whatever you call it brand that um, they sell in Home Depot, Home Hardware, Lowe's called uh, Circa 1850. And it's pretty good. It's pretty comparable. It, it's not as um, potent and toxic as this, but that's probably because you're using it in your home. They didn't want to put the full strength methyl chloride uh, in that stuff. So it works pretty good still. And uh, I don't know much about the other green type of strippers. I know that they're mostly a um, thicker application. I know Lee Valley has a couple of them, a citrus strip and stuff like that, that you leave on for quite a long time. And they work pretty good and you use water to, to wash them off. So they're a little less not uh, toxic if you're doing stuff in your own home. But for us, um, I need something that works quick and it's toxic, but we have ventilation here. And uh, we uh, I've been using this for 20 years and I love this stuff, so it does a good job for me. So once you've done the stripping, you guys have probably seen, I wash it down with something afterwards and that is methyl hydrate. And over here is where I keep the products that I'm using. So the stripper's up here, this is just the liquid stripper. And then down here I have a five gallon pail of the denatured alcohol or uh, ethyl alcohol and basically methyl hydrate you can buy uh, at the hardware store again in this form it's basically the same stuff that you can get on the shelf in in your regular stores and this neutralizes the stripper on the pieces in the wood and kind of washes away any of the wax residue that is left from the strippers because any stripper that um, you use does have a little bit of wax to keep the product moist on the wood because that's when it works so we rinse that off afterwards and then just dry with a cloth and that's good for prep stuff. So let me move into glues now. The glue that I uh, use for a lot of my chair repairs and stuff that need it is the West System Epoxy. So it's a two part uh, resin and uh, hardener here. And they have a couple of different ones. I actually buy this at a marine store. So it's a marine grade epoxy. It's moisture resistant and I find this stuff awesome for repairs that are just kind of beyond uh, a nice fitting break or anything like that that needs a filler or chairs that have really bad joints or just a lot of things I use this probably a little bit too much um, but anyways uh, you can you can probably find it in a boat store or something that if you're looking for a good epoxy this stuff is awesome and for other Jobs, I, I have used the tight bond wood glue, which is fine. Um, I don't think it's it's bad at all, it, but I don't really notice a bunch of difference between that and just regular um, carpenter's glue, cabinet maker's glue that I get at Lee Valley. 
So I have nothing against tight bond. I think it's a good glue and they have all different kinds of glues that you can use. They have a waterproof uh, glue that is pretty good if you need to use it in, in those types of applications. Worst thing ever though is just the bottle that they put their glue in is terrible. And I mean, if somebody has an awesome idea out there for a glue bottle that doesn't plug every time you want to get some glue on something, I've seen someone use a French's mustard squeezer, which kind of sounds like a good idea to me. I might use that. I'm just gonna eat my mustard first. So anyways, those are the glues that I usually get into for the most part. Specialty glues that I'll use when I need to. Um, I This is what I've got left of uh, my old brown glue from Lee Valley, which is pretty much just hide glue. Um, if you can see in there, it's kind of like a, it's really stinky for one thing, um, but it's just like a, a brown kind of a little bit runny stuff. But what I if I'm using a lot of it, I'll make my own. So these are high glue palettes that you mix with water. And this is my little warmer. This is like a small one. I know people have bigger ones than this. Um, and then you mix that all up and you warm it up for a good six hours or so on the hot plate. I dropped this one on the floor, so I should probably just go buy a new one, but it still works. So kind of how it goes in the shop. So you just mix that up. Once it's hot, you mix it up and it's really good. And uh, I should use this stuff more often than I do in the shop. It's better for uh, antique restoration because it is a reversible glue. Um, and a lot of you know f future repairs would thank me if I use that a little bit more in the epoxy. I know a couple of you have made some comments there. So I will uh, try to use that more. Um, because I'm just stuck in my old ways with my West system, which everybody gets stuck in their ways. So that's the glue for the most part. Now for putties, uh, for larger repairs, um, I'll either replace with wood if it's not really needing wood there, or I think I can get away with the putty, I'll use an epoxy putty. Uh, a couple companies make them. You can get one at Lee Valley as well, but uh, this is a Mohawk brand putty and these guys come in so many different shades. This is the walnut shade here. So you can kind of match it to the project that you're working on. They are expensive, but they work really well and they'll save you a ton of time on a repair if it's the right thing for that situation. Uh, in terms of other softer putties um, for like little nicks and things that you just can't stand or, or steam out, I use the Timbermate um, water-based wood putty. This stuff works pretty good, no complaints. I like that it's not in a tube and that it doesn't have a screw on cap because you never get all that gunk stuck in your cap that you can't close anymore. So I like that uh, the container works pretty good for me too. And that's part of the, the issue, noting the glue. So other than that, that's kind of uh, what we do here in the prep station for supplies. Um, sandpaper, I've been kind of um, farting around with uh, Merca's uh, brand sandpaper. It's not bad, I don't mind it. Um, nothing bad to say yet about it. It doesn't last quite as long as I think it should, but I'm not super unimpressed with it. I've uh, traditionally stuck with my Norton brands that I buy at a auto body shop. And uh, Norton makes quite a different bunch of grades of sandpaper, but I just find their paper weight and how long they last to be pretty excellent. And uh, I've been using this stuff with my dad for 20 years too. So it's just maybe because I, I'm stuck in my ways again, but I think it's a pretty good paper. It's not cheap. One of these sleeves is 200 bucks, but it lasts me probably two, two and a half to three years, I would say. So it's kind of like a big investment, but it span it out over time. It doesn't really cost that much. So anyways, let's head over to uh, where I keep my stains. All right, so back here in the finishing area, this is kind of where I have all of the stain that I use. And there is uh, one brand that I like the most, and that would be Gaudi. And you've seen me use these in a bunch of different colors. It's a solvent-based stain. It penetrates the wood, but it still has a bit of that colorant that sits on top. So I find them very uh, forgiving to use, and they really get a good color on your wood, even on maple. I think that's their fame to claim is that we can color hard maple and actually get a good color in, did I not say that right? Fame, claim to fame, sorry. 
And that's their claim to fame is that they can actually color hard maple and get a lot of colorant to stay on the maple because it's such a hard wood to penetrate. So there's that. And then uh, I do use old master's stains. I think they're also pretty nice. They're not as uh, penetrating because they're an oil-based stain, but they're super uh, good on their color range. They've got a lot of different um, beautiful colors that they come in. So these work really well. You do need to let this dry a lot longer than the solvent-based stains. Uh, just because it's an oil base so it needs to dry completely before you go on with your finishes i've got a couple of minwax products here um i generally think they're crap but i don't want to say that so they're they're okay sometimes you get a good color and minwax is just the right thing so i've got a couple of colors here that just got me to the right point to match something and uh, it worked for that. And a couple of little Verathane stains that I keep around just because you need that little bit of color um, and they seem to have the right color for that job. We get a lot of jobs where we're trying to match the top to the base or a repaired area and it really helps to have a whole range of colors when you're doing that. Um, another brand that I use in all of my areas in the shop is uh, Mohawk. So I've got a couple of their stains here. I don't use a ton of them um, I'm not really versed in the Mohawk stains, but they seem to work just fine. Um, maybe I should try using more of them. That's basically for my colorants, um, where, you know, where I get my stains in. Most of them are solvent based or oil based and, uh, I kind of stick in that range. Um, for couple other things on the shelf that I keep if I'm doing oil finishes, which I don't get into too, too often, but um, I've got, you can get these guys at uh, Home Hardware, I think too, just for like a Danish oil. If you're just cleaning up a teak piece or something that is uh, already oiled and you wanna re-oil something, Danish oil is usually what I go to for that kind of thing. So I won't get too far into oils and stuff like that because I don't use them a ton. So, um, when I'm done doing that, usually there's a little bit of toning or something didn't stain up quite right and I need to give it a little bit of color. For the most part, if it's a giant table or a big piece, I will mix my own toners and use my um, finishers touch-up guns. So it's basically a bit of the stain with some lacquer and really thinned out with lacquer thinner. And then I can really pinpoint areas that need a little bit of color and, and touching up, especially on a large piece. I'm not gonna use a spray bomb. I'm gonna actually mix the whole toner for the piece. And I find that using um, these dye spray stains works really well for uh, concentrated color in, in spraying too. So sometimes I'll get into that. And that's a Lenmar product there for spray stain. But I usually just mix my own with the solvent-based uh, gouty stains and some lacquer. But if I just need a little spritz of some color and just kind of a little bit of a, a color shift, not too major or dramatic, I'll use my Mohawk toners. So these guys um, come in so many colors, it's not even funny. This isn't even like a quarter of what they have available for tones. But these are the ones that I've kind of kept on hand that work for me and what I'm doing in the shop. Um, and they, they have a good range of traditional colors. So when you're a restorer, you really need to match those old tones of wood. They've got a really great array of stuff like that. So one that I'm using all the time is the medium brown walnut, the extra dark walnut, and the light walnut. Those three seem to happen all the time in, in jobs that I'm really hitting all the time. Um, one that I really enjoyed lately is the fiddle tone cherry which you guys probably saw on uh, the video with the secretary that we just did that one kind of saved my butt there another two that are big players are the raw umber and the burnt umber they're very traditional colors that i often use and uh, they come in handy so they also have for uh Touching up and on-site work that we do sometimes they have they've got some uh, lacquers some pre-catalyzed lacquers in cans and you can get um, different sheens. So this perfect blend stuff, I'm really, really enjoying because if you've got any wax or anything on site on a piece, you really can't clean that off. This stuff will flow right over that piece. So it's really nice when you're doing a touch up on site and you don't have to worry about fish eyes or anything like that. 
Um, their sealer is pretty good, um, just for in-can blend. It's not bad, really great on touch-ups as well if you're trying to build the finish after touching up like a scratch or something like that. So that works pretty good. Um, I do keep a little bit of the commercial stuff on hand just in case I run into a finish that has them already. Um, this stuff is actually pretty great. I don't mind Verithane's uh, satin varnish. I actually use it on site finishing quite a bit and I'll get it in the can here. I think I've been using this stuff for years. I really like it. It flows nicely and uh, the brush work is really easy with this stuff and you get a really beautiful low luster satin glow and it's got a nice little amber tone to it. So uh, if I'm doing like a stair job or tr interior trim or fireplace mantle or something in someone's home where I can't spray, this is kind of my go-to on that one. So it's good stuff. Oh, other than that, for finishes, think, uh, or for coloring, that's pretty much what we get to. You want to do the blush retarder or whatever it is? Oh, yeah. So we live in Windsor, Essex, uh, and it gets super humid here. Like we had like 95% humidity for weeks on end. Uh, and a lot of times you'll have issues with blush if you're trying to finish. I just don't, but sometimes if I have to, um, I get into finishing when it's too, too humid. And you'll get this white haze over a piece. Now, that's not gonna be your problems at home. Your problem will be if you leave a pizza on a table and you get a white mark or a coffee cup and you get a white mark, it's actually moisture that's trapped underneath your finish. So it heated up, moisture got in, and then it dried, and now you have a milky finish over top. This stuff will, it's a very strong um, uh, solvent set soften up the finish again and allow that moisture to escape while it redries. So it's called Super Blusher Eraser and it works in most situations like that, not everyone, but um, it'll soften up the finish and allow that moisture to escape and then when it dries it should dry clear. Saved my butt quite a few times this one and we you know can do a lot of on-site repairs for those little rings that you get on tables or pizza box uh, areas on tables. So this stuff is pretty cool. I keep it keep it around. And I think that's good for my balms. I mean, I'm probably missing something, but that's the general. So other little coloring things that I do here are my um, professional markers, crayons, and hard lacquer colored sticks. So these are all for touch-up work. Um, these are expensive Jiffy markers basically with a solvent and acetone based colorant. So it's uh, really stay fast. So you put it on a piece of furniture, they come in translucent, they come in opaques, just depends what kind, this is a glaze marker so it's pretty translucent. Um, I've got the other type is a Pro Mark, so that's going to be a little bit more of a, a hard color, but still translucent, so you're always seeing the wood. So not an opaque marker, but something that's kind of got a finish and a color built into it, and it allows you to still see through to the grain, which is, you know, when you're touching up furniture, you don't want to just put a big old black mark on something because you're going to see that. So you want something that's nice and translucent, but has a color that can sit over top and dry quickly. And that's what these guys do. And they can save your butt in a tight situation or just give you a quick repair when you don't need a lot. So I keep these guys around. I need to get some more, but I've got um, a couple of these graining pens that you've probably seen me use. And I just keep a small array of these guys around. Um, basically, it's a very fine brush tip pen for drawing in after a repair on site or on a little piece. And they just have a very nice tip to work and make, you know, little graining marks on something before you uh, touch it up. So you've got like a big putty blob or epoxy putty and you want to redraw in the grain on something. These are awesome for that. Also for just like a little tip brush mark, if you've got like a little, little pin prick of, of color somewhere on your table that you just finished, you can just touch it and you'll get a blob of color. So those are really handy. And then we got these wax sticks. These guys I use um, if there's just like a little nick or dent on something that I missed in the prep area and they come in colors so I can do that or on site work. Um, sometimes they work pretty good. 
Uh, sometimes a seam will pop on a table between veneers and the lacquer wants to sink into it and I'll just kind of fill a little bit with this and uh, it's not lifted veneer it's just something that you can cover with wax and you can you can actually finish over these with your lacquer and they, they're pretty semi-hard wax so um, they you know they'll cover that hole and then be able to take a finish over top of it which is pretty cool for a wax product to be able to do and then these guys here um, show you they kind of go with this whole setup that I built myself a little while ago needs a little bit of work but these are my uh, burn-ins so they come in opaque colors and translucent colors as well so it's kind of like you know clear finishes dark finishes dark colors and so you pick whatever matches your repair best and uh, you heat up this guy. And this is just a little alcohol burner that my dad actually made me out of an old red pepper jelly jar. <laughs> so it kind of makes me happy when I look at it. It's a little cute. You just put like a nut with a little screw tip and put the, the wick through there. So I just fill this up with alcohol and then light that on fire. And then these guys sit here and these are my knives, a couple of burn-in knives that I keep. So you'd heat one up while you're doing your repair on the, and you, you want to be careful how hot you get it. So just a small flame here would heat up your knife. And once that's hot, you'd take it off, switch out for this one. While that's heating, you've got your stick here. You grab a little bit of colorant and you pop it into your repair. And then usually that it's cool by then, you switch your other knife, wipe it off, flatten that surface. Along with that, you need to use your little Berman balm to protect the finish around the repair. So this is how I have this little kit. Sometimes when I know what uh, color I'm gonna be taking to the job site, I won't bring everything and I'll just have a, a few colors here in this little drawer that I popped into the side of this, this guy. So, I mean, it's not super functional, but it works for me. So that's basically all the color and repair and stuff like that that we use there. So let's get into finishes actual finishes. So 95% of the finishes that I do in the shop are lacquer, post-catalyzed lacquer and pre-catalyzed lacquer. I don't use nitrocellulose lacquer because it's uh, not really that great at standing up against moisture and other things. Um, so what I have really been impressed with is the Lenmar brand lacquer. And this is another five gallon pail tipper here that I've got set up. I've got my Lenmar uh, pre-catalyzed lacquer here, and on the base is just my lacquer thinner. So these two I'm always pulling from to fill up again. And uh, when I'm doing high wear finishes, like stairs, dining tables, uh, just tops that get a lot of use, chair seat tops, stuff like that, I will mix a uh, post pat lacquer. And Lenmar makes a pretty good one, and you just mix, I don't know where my acid is right now, but you'd mix your heart, um, your catalyst into this post cat lock, and then it would have a life of like 12 to 24 hours. But this stuff dries super, super hard, so really great for tabletops that we've got going on here right now. And uh, yeah, so those are all sprayed in the booth here. And let me say, thank you for getting on my ass about the mask. Okay, I appreciate all your care. I do have a wonderful mask and I just didn't wear it in the videos. I usually wear a mask, did not wear it in all the videos and I'm sorry, that's all I can say. But this is my mask here, it's 3M, it's really great. It was $300, it's an awesome mask. It covers my eyes, it covers every part that I need putting my face in. It's really comfortable, really easy to put on. It is pop this guy on here and this whole seal is awesome and you can tighten it up here here and it's just really tight so if i'm like spraying inside a cabinet i don't get any of the blast back these um there's a screen here that i can put a new one on every once in a while if i get a lot of overspray on this piece it just pops off really easy so i should probably change out this screen you just peel off a layer and you put a new one on these are interchangeable, Pretty do that pretty often. So I'm sorry for not wearing a mask on the videos, but I really do appreciate you guys caring and I will absolutely be putting this on. 
In fact, I wore it for six hours yesterday spraying all these tables and uh, I just didn't do that on film, so not smart. Anyways, uh, other than that, oh, I'll go and show you my guns here. So the lacquer that I mix, I've got a couple of guns. Some are cheap. This is my favorite finish gun. It needs a good clean. Everything works hard in here. It's dirty and messy. But this is a, um, a pretty old DeVilbis uh, HVLP spray, spray gun, and uh, it just gets hooked up to my compressor back there, which I keep at about 20 PSI. And uh, this guy works awesome. I can pretty much dial it down perfectly the way I need it to, and it, it just has a really nice uh, spray pattern, atomizes the material perfectly, um, and just does a really nice finish. And you can see some of these pieces and that we've seen before that we've done them with. I also have a couple of cheapos. These are my like Princess Auto workers. So, I mean, they're like 50 bucks a piece, uh, whereas this one's probably around 3,000. Um, so, I mean, they work not great. This one makes me angry often, but I just use it for gross paint and uh, this guy I use for paint as well. And uh, they've lasted for, I don't know, four or five years now. These cups crack eventually and stuff like that, but those are the things I use. Um, filter wall probably needs a change out pretty soon, um, but I know somebody was commenting there about those things being full and, and a, a fire hazard. They do get brushed down and cleaned pretty regularly because they fill up almost instantly when I start spraying because we've got a big ass fan that pulls everything out here. So um, it really does get stuck up full of stuff, but I could probably put new ones in pretty soon there. And uh, what else, what else are we gonna talk about? Other than that, for finishes, I do get into shellac sometimes and I mix my own up. Um, I usually just get the, the different shellac flakes, which I think are actually over there and mix them up with some alcohol um, and do that usually with a brush on application. And then uh, for, for painting, because we do get into painting, um, we use a lacquer-based paint, and it's also made by Lenmar, so it's with a pre-cut uh, lacquer, and it's just mixed into uh, colors that anybody wants. So my customers will usually just bring me a paint swatch from the Home Depot or wherever they want to go to get a paint swatch, and I can get it mixed into my lacquer-based paint. So it's as durable as my clear coats, and it's uh, a really nice finish. So. That's what I do for paint. Um, this is the shellac that I, I use that I can just get in the can if I'm not mixing myself. Um, I can keep this on hand too. And I have tried a few water-based finishes. Uh, Mohawk made one that was pretty good. I'm still not, I mean, maybe I'm just not good at it, but like, I'm still not super convinced that there's enough product surrounding the actual lacquer, like the softeners to repair and all these kinds of things that you need to work with the finish. Um, but maybe I just haven't done my research and I need to get into that a little bit more. But um, water-based finishes have come a long way in the professional world and I just haven't really dove into that part of the world yet. And a lot of my finishes that I'm repairing are old and solvent-based, so kind of have to have that whole world still survive for me. But, yeah, so these these things here are all the toners that I was talking about that I mix myself. So um, it's just lacquer and solvent-based stain that I mix and I keep them on hand just for doing little uh, touch-ups with my toning guns. So those I all have labeled. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything in here. Why did that box behind the Mohawk can have your name spelled wrong? Where? Behind the Mohawk can. This is my paint store. I don't know my name yet, even though I've bought paint from them for, I don't know, eight years. <laughs> Still call me Trina. My name's not Trina, it's Trina. <laughs> I keep telling them, but whatever. Um, and then, what else can I tell you about? And here, I do keep a bit of these guys around. These are um, the dye stains that um, Mohawk makes. They're pretty handy when you need like a really saturated color. Um, so I keep a couple of these on hand for doing a little bit of spray finishing or just 
uh, toning a piece with a little brush or touch-ups because the color really stays where you put it. Um, extra gun parts, all the stuff. Well, here's the, for the post-catalyzed lacquer, this is the uh, catalyst that you add to the post-cat lac. And it's a pretty specific amount. The French side. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> so that's what I keep around for that. And for polishing, I don't know if I've only shown you one video where there's a polishing aspect to it, but I like the uh, Mohawk three-stage three process. Um, so these guys are my like cream polishers. And then 3M makes a couple of really awesome um, swirl mark removers and waxes that I use as well. So I keep those on hand when I get a high gloss piano in, which is always a nightmare, or just something that needs a really nice polish. And then I can use my Rotex. If you know what that is, you're cool. Okay. Yeah, so it's a mess and it's like uh, totally all over the place. Oh, another favorite. And those of you who watch Thomas Johnson, this is where I found out about this stuff from because um, sometimes you want to do like an extra polish on something and just give it that nice low luster sheen or you just want to clean up a piece you're not refinishing. This stuff is awesome. I love it. Try it. It's so good and it smells wonderful too. And there's also this stuff and if we had Smell-O-Vision, this is my favorite it's a salad bowl um, surface, but I like to put it on the inside of drawers. And it's actually antibacterial. And when you have, ah, it smells like oranges, it smells so good. When you have like a little stinky drawer or something and you finish it over, you wanna just put this in. It does dry, so it's not gonna get your clothes all waxy, but it smells so good. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. For products. If I miss something, just ask and I will answer you. But anyways, I hope this was really informative and helpful and I hope that you're able to find these products if you're looking for them. Um, and uh, cheers. All right. Yes! <laughs> the big shot. <laughs> I'm gonna include that in the footage. What? Did you have that? Yep. We're rolling. Sweet. Hey guys, this is Trina at John's Furniture Repair. Thank you, first and foremost, for all of your likes and subscriptions.